Hello, dear learner friends, welcome to this video session on data link layer protocol called HDLC part 2. So, as we know HDLC is high level data link layer control protocol and was one of the popular protocols at data link layer. Myself, Mr. Vipul Kondekar from Walchan Institute of Technology, Sulapur. So, let us go for this HDLC protocol. These are the learning outcomes of this video session. So, in this session we will try to understand the frame format for HDLC. How exactly a frame is formed? What are the different parts or portions of that HDLC frame? What is the significance of each and every portion? So, that we will try to understand. As well, you will be able to understand how some frame based protocol or frame based communication takes place. Now, in this presentation, we will have the contents small introduction, then we will go for different HDLC frame types and then what are the different control field formats in HDLC frame. So, in the HDLC when you are talking about HDLC, it is basically a bit oriented protocol which can be used for point to point communication as well as point to multi point communication that is what we have seen. All the specifications are for HDLC are developed by ISO and rather this HDLC is improved version or superset of IBM's SNA SDLC protocol. As we know that OSI layer model suggests that there will be layer 2 called as data link layer. So, HDLC is one of the most widely used data link layer protocol. When initially they started thinking of having computer networks, so this HDLC was quite popular because it was supporting half duplex communication as well full duplex communication, it was supporting synchronous asynchronous point to point as well as point to multi point communication. Now, as we want to concentrate in this session on frame format for HDLC, can you enlist what are the different framing methods? Recall, right. So, framing is nothing but dividing the data into the manageable data units. Framing is done by the data link layer of the sender. Data link layer receives the data from the upper layer called as network layer. So, it receives the packet and those packets has to be merged into frames, so that those frames I can send on to the physical layer. And there are different framing techniques, how you will form the frames. So, framing techniques starts with the character count technique. Second technique may be you can have byte stuffing, then there can be a technique called as bit stuffing, framing with bit stuffing and you may have a technique called as physical layer coding violation. So, these are the different approaches for framing. So, it will be interesting to know what type of framing is used in HDLC also. So, with this, there are three types of frames in case of HDLC. Either it will be a information frame, supervisory frame or unnumbered frame. So, they are named as I frame, S frame or U frame. Now, this I frame is the information frame means it is used to carry the data which you want to communicate. Also, it is used for 
फ्लो एंड एरल कंट्रोल इंफॉर्मेशन वेन यू वॉन्ट टू ट्रांसफर सुपरवाइजरी फ्रेम इज यूज फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग एडिशनल फंक्शन फॉर फ्लो कंट्रोल एंड एरर कंट्रोल एंड अनंबर फ्रेम्स आर देयर दो अनंबर फ्रेम्स आर यूज फॉर मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द नेटवर्क मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द लिंक कैरियर इंफॉर्मेशन मैनेजमेंट सो दोज आर डन बाई द अनंबर फ्रेम्स सो दिस थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ फ्रेम्स आर पॉसिबल इन केस ऑफ एच डी एल सी नाउ दिस इज द जनरल फॉर्मैट फॉर द फ्रेम एंड हाउ एग्जैक्टली इट वेरीज फॉर द थ्री काइंड ऑफ frames for hdlc so in general the hdlc frame start with a flag bit it will be of 8 bits and it will end up with again a flag bit okay then you have a address field control field information and fcs fcs stands for frame check sequence now few of these fields are available as it is and few are not there so just if you compare this general format with the i frame you will find that almost all fields are there in information frame but if you compare this format with the s frame in s frame the information field is not present in u frame the information field is there but that has got some different significance that is the management information you are having in the s frame so this is something you are getting from the upper layer maybe from the user information maybe you, the information you are getting from the upper layer called as network layer but when how it is converted into i frame is these headers these fields are appended and this is the format for the hdlc frame and this is how the frames are sent so this is how you are sending flag then address then control information then user information fcs and flag again now let us try to understand what is the significance of these different fields now if you look at the flag bit pattern the flag bit pattern used here is this zero then six consecutive ones and zeros and the type of framing you can recall the framing technique used for hdlc is bit stuffing so in bit stuffing you have to take care of this format will be there or this will be the flag format for indicating the start of the frame as well as end of the frame but in the information field you have to make sure that this format will never occur so bit stuffing works like in the data if you find five consecutive ones i will stuff one zero bit so that i will make sure that six consecutive ones will appear only for the start of the frame or end of the frame so bit stuffing technique is used for framing and this is what is the explanation already we have seen in the data link layer functionality how bit stuffing technique works so it checks for five consecutive ones if five consecutive ones are detected then it will what we can say stuff one zero in the data now address field now the use of address field is to identify the station to which you want to communicate maybe secondary station in most of the times and usually it is of 8 bit long but it is extendable means if there are some requirements here where you may extend that address field and it will be extended in multiples of 7 bits and there also you will look for the lsb least significant bit of each octet of extended address and if that bit is 1 then that will be considered as last octet of the address and if it is 0 then still more octets are there representing the address that is one special address if all ones are there in the address field means that is a broadcast frame so that that frame is to be received to the all the hosts within the network 
So, address field consists of address of the receiver. If the same frame is sent by the primary station, so it contains the address of the secondary station. If it is sent by the secondary station, if secondary station is sending the data, who will be receiver? Primary will be the receiver. So, the address field will have the address of the primary station. And as I said, it is extendable, so hence the address field can may be one byte or several bytes long. Then you can have a control field and then the control field can be either 8 or 16 bit and this control bit field is used for flow management, flow control is done and different means flow control field will decide what type of frame it is. So, if the control frame field starts with 0, then it is information frame. If it starts with 1 0, it will be a supervisory frame. If it is 1 1, then it will be a unnumbered frame. And you will find this with this slide. So, if this is a control field format, so if it is 0, then this is the information frame. If it is 1, supervisory 1 1, then it is unnumbered frame. And then based on these bit values, other bits have got the significance. Means if it is an information frame, so this bit will be representing that it is an information frame and then next three bits will be representing N of S. N of S is what? N of S is representing here the sequence number of the sender. N of R is the receive sequence number. As sliding window protocol is used by this HDLC for flow control. So, there is a requirement of giving the sequence number for the frame and this is what is done. This is how the sequencing is done, sequence numbering is given, done. So, these are the different fields where S stands for supervisory function bit, N of R is receiver sequence number, receive sequence number, N of S is transmit sequence number. M stands for unnumbered bit, P oblique F stands for pole oblique final bit. So, it is used for interaction purpose. So, this is something how we use that P oblique F bit. So, if it is a command frame, so P bit is used for pole for primary, means if P bit is 1, so what you are doing is you are soliciting response from the peer. In the response frame that F is, is interpretation taken as F bit and if it is 1, it indicates that response to soliciting command. So, this is about P oblique F bit. So, these are the different bits used in the bit formats used in the HDLC frame and this is how the HDLC frame is formed and as additional functions as we have discussed HDLC does error control. So, it uses CRC for error control, cyclic redundancy check for error control it does flow control uses sliding window protocol for the flow control. So, this is in brief the frame format how framing is done for the HDLC protocol and significance of different fields in the frame format. With this we will stop here. These are the references used for this video presentation. Thank you.